Welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogley's Guitar Show. We've got some unboxing and boxing to do today. This one over here, yeah, it looks a little bit beat up, but I'm guessing it's just because there wasn't a bunch of padding down here. I mean, even I'm guilty of that sometimes. So just because your box is dented in, not, not always meaning that there's, you know, doom and dismay inside of here. But this is a guitar that I have not had one of these in a long time. And if I'm being honest, I've actually never actually had this particular model, but there's another one that's very closely related to this that I had a long time ago. I always think it's fun when it's all connected and you could just do this, but only some of it. Oh, hello there. <laughs> Well, that tells you this is some sort of slash guitar, right? Oh. That actually sounds a little bit scary. Hopefully that's just something inside of the case. I've been having really bad luck buying stuff lately. Usually it's just undisclosed issues that the people themselves, they didn't even know about, but let's hope for the best of this slash Les Paul. Oh my, this is actually pretty nice. So I think this one's called the Vintage Sunburst. I'm a little bit iffy, honestly, as to what all these different ones are called because there's been so many different slash models, but these are the USA standards before they got ridiculously expensive. And when I first started, you know, kind of dealing in Les Pauls and things like that, I had the Rosa Corsa model. It was pretty much this exact same guitar. It had the slash thing on the headstock instead of the Les Paul model, but it was red. Personally, I prefer this. I think this is a really cool faded out sunburst thing. Oh, nice. And it's like a, a dark back gold top. That's really cool. So we're looking good here. So there must just be something floating around in this case that had me scared. <laughs> there we go. That's what was flopping around. It looks like the original bridge, original hang tag for it. So list price 4351. I would guess that means they sold new around uh, 28 to 32. I'd have to do some research, but even used, these things have held and maintained value very well. So I can't wait to do the review on this one. This is looking pretty good. And something I'm going to start doing for all these guitars because I hate it when I don't find out for a week that the truss rod's maxed out. This is the worst part of my job. I hate taking the truss rod covers off because if there's issues, which thankfully we're good on this one, I hate being the bearer of bad news because sometimes people just won't believe you and then you have to get in this whole return fight. So that's something else you guys can be apprehensive about with me. <laughs> I should probably do a video about how I check in guitars because I think Philip McKnight did something very similar to that. And I thought that was a good idea. Maybe people would be curious of how I do it. And this one's actually extra fun. I'm not sure when this one's actually gonna get released because I've got a lot of guitars coming and I think that's actually gonna be an unboxing video of itself since they're kind of newer guitars. But this is a consignment piece. Somebody messaged the seller and said, I really like these guitars. You should see if he's interested. And <laughs> it was kind of funny because I thought it was just a random Joe Schmo asking me my opinion about the guitar. So I told him, well, the price is a little bit crazy here, but you know, it's this, this, and this. Here's why that one would be special. And then it turns out, oh, okay. <laughs> it's the actual guy selling it. So I told him, if you want to sell this guitar, you are going to have to educate people as to why this thing is special because it is super special. So special, in fact, special is part of its name. And he did a fantastic job packing this thing. But I've been wanting to document this particular model and the fact that this one is extra special made me, you know, even more willing to do this. It's kind of like a PRS ripoff where they kind of got in trouble for that. They stopped producing them. But look at what's special about this one. 
it's not actually the Epiphone version. So I'm gonna leave it at there. You can check out the full review and demo. But this is the Nouveau by Gibson. And now we move on to today's main topic, the unwanted guitars. <laughs> so I've been buying quite a few Fender guitars lately because, you know, I wanted to revamp Fender Friday. I'm having a bunch of fun with it. I mean, it's to the point where I bought so many, we're going to have to start reviewing them also on non Fender Friday days. But Fender has also released some very unpopular guitars in the past couple of years. We're talking things like the Alternate Reality Series, Parallel Universe. You know, some are more popular than others. And this store got hung with three very unwanted guitars. So I figure, eh, why don't I be the savior for straight music in Austin, Texas and buy these things from them? Because these guitars are just so doofy, I feel bad for them. And they deserve a little bit of love. So let's go ahead and get these open and see what I bought. Unfortunately, I don't think I have a custom shop standard historic 59 Les Paul in here. <laughs> and I get people all the time messaging me, do I want to buy this guitar or that guitar? It's like, you gotta tell me the price. I'm always shopping for a deal. And this dealer was very, very willing to work with me to get rid of these unwanted instruments. First things first here, we've got a pretty nice hard shell case. I don't believe I've ever seen a Fender case have these little bumpers on it. That's kind of interesting. I was kind of worried if that would like make the case topple over, but it seems to be pretty stable. We've got a nice little handle here. And I'm wondering if these are the latches that are similar on that Richie Kotzen Telecaster. No, these are more of the TSA style. I also like these though. So what is our first unwanted guitar? <laughs> Oh, you know, this actually looks a little bit better in person than I thought. It's the Sunburst Jazzmaster Telecaster mashup. Apparently, this guitar is so hated that Music Is Win, Tyler, actually made a video about the most controversial guitars, and he put this on the list. I don't think it's that bad, is it? Do people really hate these things as much as they say they do? So yeah, I can't wait to, uh, you know, do this on a Fender Friday. It looks like we still have the plastic on here. The serial number makes it out to be a 2018 model. So it just kind of sat around in their store for about a year or so. Looks like you, we've got a little bit of figuring in the neck. I mean, I wouldn't call it flame flame, but you got some decent grain. It's got some scratches from being on the floor. After I bought this, the shop sent me some more photos of like some of these nicks and dings that they didn't remember being on it. It's like, yeah, man, you gave me a good enough of a deal on these. I'm not going to worry about it. And now, do we have a Martin in this box? Uh, I think I've only ever done one Martin on the channel. It was one of those Shenandoahs. That was a guy in uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana. He brought that over as like a just a consignment video deal. I don't know, he's probably still trying to sell it. He also brought me a really rare Rickenbacker bass. I should probably have him bring that back over now that I have a little bit of a better setup because apparently that is a very rare guitar and I think he's still asking like sixteen, seventeen thousand $17,000 for it. I don't know enough about the Rickenbackers to really do them justice, but that was a cool bass. So it looks like we get another one of these nice little hard shell cases. I definitely like these better than the uh, the vintage style cases that I've been getting with the Rarity series because, you know, these things actually work a lot easier. Unwanted guitar number two. Oh, <laughs> another one of these. So I really, really, really only wanted to buy this one. But after I'd made the deal for this guitar and that one, I, I just wanted to be the saving grace for this music shop and buy the tobacco one too. I really couldn't decide what color was better. This was my first choice. And in person, despite not getting the wood grain, I think this reminds me more of a jazz master than a sunburst color does. But I had initially made the deal on this one because it had some wear and tear to it. A little chip right there. So I thought I could get a better deal bargaining on this one first. And you know, the other one actually ended up being in worse condition. I probably should have only bought one. So we'll have a double feature Fender Friday of the Jazzmaster Tellies. Oh, now we get a Taylor box. 
I promise you, <laughs> this is not another Jazzmaster Telly. I did not buy three of them. But it is a distant relative of the Jazzmaster Tellys, but I think this thing is just so stupidly ugly. I had to buy it. I had actually forgotten that I had already made a wire in about this guitar, but that was back when it was first released. So <laughs> I can't wait to get this one open. They definitely pack these guitars pretty well. I think this is uh, actually more packing material than Fender used in like their original boxes. That's kind of something that's always surprised me about like when I buy a new Fender guitar or somebody ships me it with the original materials. They literally just have something to protect the bottom of the case and the top. There's like no extra space filler. But, you know, it must work out for him. The cost savings feature for that, for doing thousands of guitars, I guess it would add up. So what is our final unwanted guitar? Oh. Uh... <laughs> okay, so it's another Telly something mashup, but this time it's a Stratocaster in a Telecaster's body. <laughs> I'll be honest with you guys, this actually works much better in person. I was not expecting the mint green pick guard. That just screams that should not be on here. I was expecting like pure white, but you know, it's just so doofy. You can't help but like it. I had somebody leave a comment. It was one of the guitars I was selling. They said, it's like a train wreck. You can't look away. <laughs> Uh, that's a good way to describe this guitar. Wow, this one's actually a 2017, so that tells you how happy they were to get rid of this thing. I thought this was a limited edition that didn't exist till 2018, so this must be a pretty early Stratella, as I think I called it in that Lyran episode. We've got a few small nicks and dings, but, but I love these unwanted guitars. I mean, they're a little bit goofy, but, but you know, that tends to be the ones I like the best. You know, even from Gibson, things like the Marauder and the S1, those are always a bunch of fun. So seeing mashups like this, I only wish Gibson would do a short limited edition run of weird stuff. You know, that's all combined. It's just meant to be silly looking. So we will see you guys on a Fender Friday in the future. I'll start working on that Slash Les Paul probably next. And I'm sorry guys, I do not have anything to pack up today. Cause I kinda need to get started working on all these other guitars. Scratch that. I forgot, we do have one to pack up. And unfortunately, this is not a guitar I sold, it's a return. I started making the review for this custom because somebody had asked for it in the comments section. It was initially just gonna be, you know, a buy and sell thing. But as I was looking at the truss rod, holy crap, this thing is super over tightened. Go ahead and take it off so you can see it. So essentially, if you try to tighten this any further, all you're doing is compressing the wood and bringing the rod up. This needs some repair. You gotta clamp down the neck. You have to completely loosen off the truss rod. You've gotta hammer it back into place, add washers, and then you have to disclose that the truss rods had work done on it. So it really hurts the value of the guitar. So that was very disappointing to find this. I hate having to return guitars. So I will be sending this one back as not as described. So far, the seller's been kind of nice. I believe he watches the show, he's kind of a fan of the show, and this was kind of a, a new thing for them. So hopefully they learned their lesson to definitely check the truss rods before you sell the guitars. And I guess if we were getting technical here, this thing was sold as all original. I mean, you got replaced strap buttons. Sure, the original plastics are in there, but you'd also be missing the pick guard. And the other thing about this guitar is it smells like a cat litter box. <laughs> That's the first guitar I've had that kind of smelled like that. So thank you, Troglodytes, for tuning into this unboxing episode. I hope you had fun checking out these five guitars, and we'll see you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.